banks fail as an act of war. It's a financial war. And you could see that in a headline I have here, Max, the global debt clock. Now, if you notice this map, this is from The Economist, the number scrolling across the top, adding up, adding up, that's the amount of public debt. This is debt that is being transferred from the banks to the population. Notice all the nations in red, those are the ones with the most debt, the most public debt. Notice, however, also that those are the financial services economies, America, the UK, France, these countries, Japan. Yeah. Well, it was about 40 trillion, if I got that number correctly. Well, it's adding up so fast as we're sitting here talking. Yeah, well, that's about uh, what the thing caused the troubles that we're in now. So first, this crisis is 70 times larger in terms of its losses. Second, it was driven by an even bigger wave of fraud than the EBA, which is European prices. Banking Authority, the stress prices, test. There would be 66 failures, with RBS, Deutsche Bank, and BMP needing the most capital at 19 billion euros, 14 billion euros, and 14 billion, well. billion respectively. This era, Among the we banks find that 90% of liars' loans are fraudulent. That liars' loans by 2006 are one out of every three loans made. That means roughly two million fraudulent loans. And we find that it was lenders who the lies. So they change laws thanks to the complicity of guys like Bill Clinton and George W. Bush who just kind of uh, write the laws that the bankers tell them to write. And this gives them immunity. That's why this banking catastrophe has become so pernicious, is that the bankers have become this multi-headed hydra cancerous tumor that's just, as you say, sucking the lifeblood out of the global economy. So it requires almost a superhero to appear uh, with a silver bullet or something magical. To, because right now, nobody is standing up to the bank, not Barack Obama, God, no. Uh, but there is nobody in the world's face. 